Hello and welcome back to another show. I'm Sid and in today's video I'm going to be showing you some simple tap to change effects with face meshes uh, and user interaction in Spark AR Studio. We'll be using the patch editor today. Uh, I know it looks a little bit complicated but once you get the grip, once you get to grips with what we're actually doing, this is quite a simple effect uh, that anyone can create at home. I'll even show you how to do the eyes underneath. That's a whole separate layer. And when you hit refresh, some instructions which show up down along the bottom of the screen. That's what this is right here. So yeah, you probably hear the, uh, the siren in the background. Nothing I can do about that, I'm afraid. Let's just create a new project. I'll pause this and minimize it. And we can make this one full screen. And let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is switch over to the FaceTime camera so you can see me. And then we will add some meshes to our scene. So for this, we're doing red, green, and blue. So I'm gonna add three meshes for those. And then because we wanna do eyes as well, I'll add a fourth mesh, which we'll call eyes. And because it's the, oh, we'll make sure that they're all nested inside of our face tracker as well. So they all sit on top of each other. Otherwise you get that sort of overlap. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, so now they're all uh, nested inside of each other. So we'll rename this one eyes, the top one, which is actually the bottom layer. So it's the lowest down on the set. And what we're gonna do is uncheck where it's visible. We're gonna uncheck the eyes and the mouth for that layer. And now we'll create a material layer, which we'll call eyes. And now we can do the same for these next three layers. We'll call them red, or we'll try to call them red, green, and blue. And then we'll create material layers for each of those. And we'll name them as well, just to keep things simple. When you have this few, uh, when you have this few um, like project files, uh, it's not really as important to rename everything, but if you wanna get into good good habits, then it's definitely something to, continue to consider. I just realized that I made a whole new face mesh here, didn't I? Yeah, we don't need this, we just need what we had before. I'm not very good at tutorials. So now we have our four face meshes, all named, all uh, with material layers, and our eyes, which and our eyes and mouth one, which is uh, unchecked so that they're looking freaky underneath. If you wanna make them look a little bit normal, we'll come over to the eyes material, and under shader type, we'll change it to flat. As you can see now, it just uh, diffuses all the light so that there's no uh, external light. It's not, the, 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 the material isn't being affected by any light in the scene. So it's just a completely flat color. We could change that to uh, anything we want. But I suppose for now, we'll just leave it as white. Then we can come down here and we can change these three to the colors that we want for our mask. Uh, as you can see, because the eyes uh, are at the bottom and are visible, we can see those. But the red layer is not as visible. I can drag it to the top, but you just gotta keep, keep a, just bear in mind that whatever layer you're, uh, Whatever layer your mesh is on is the one which will be seen or not, like determines whether or not it will be seen, if that makes any sense. Okay, so now we have all of our simple stuff done, which is just meshes with layers, and we have all our colors and our eyes ready to go. What we're gonna need to do next is create the actual interaction part. So right now I click on the screen, nothing happens. I have all these meshes, but they're just sitting on top of each other, and there's no way for me to get to the next one. So what I'm gonna do now is open up this patch editor, bring that open, and inside the patch editor, we're gonna double tap and it brings up this uh, menu of all these different things that you can use in your scene. You can have face landmarks that track specific parts of the face or you can input audio or animation. But for now, we're gonna be creating a user interaction. So we wanna search for screen tap. You can also do rotate, long press, all kinds of stuff. But for simplicity's sake, we're just gonna use a screen tap. Basically, this is the start of our function. So when the user taps on the screen, it will interact with whatever's next, which in this case will be a counter. Uh, and, once, and that's connected to increase. So this counter is currently set at five, which means every time the user taps on the screen, it jumps up one in increments, in increments of one until it reaches five, and then it will cycle around. So it's basically a loop that just keeps on repeating over and over again. And you can increase this number or decrease it depending on how many uh, different options you have for the user to interact with. We have three, so we'll probably use three. Uh, yeah, so we've got our screen tap and our counter. After that, you wanna come down into Logic, which has all of these uh, uh, like functional programming sort of 
functions, I guess, <laughs> uh, and equals uh, less than, all that sort of stuff, like gates and logic and the sort of things that you would use in functional programming languages. We're gonna use for this one equals exactly, which is basically just a Boolean that checks whether two numbers are equal to each other. Uh, so when we connect this up to here, you'll see uh, that when I click now on the actual phone, there is a counter that measures up. It's not connected to anything, but you can see that the counter is in fact pulsing through and checking. Okay, so now we have this, we wanna copy and paste it twice because we have red, green, and blue to fit in and we just move them around and sort of rearrange everything, get it where we want. You, the best thing about patch editor is, sorry for the sirens again, <laughs> is that you can move around, there's lots of space. So if things are starting to get unwieldy, you can always just sort of drag things around and make it more orderly. But anyway, yeah. So now that we've got all of this set up, what we're gonna need now is our three meshes, which we can control highlight by, uh, which we can highlight by clicking control click, and then come over to where we have the visible uh, property. We wanna, we don't wanna check this box or uncheck it. We wanna affect all three of them at once, and we wanna make this orange uh, arrow visible we wanna, which will take our three meshes and create patches for them inside of our patch editor that we can move around and interact with and connect up to the rest of our function so that's exactly what we're going to do now we're going to connect the red green and blue to our three equals exactly as you can see it's looking a little bit it's not working as well as we'd expect right so what we want to do now is we want to, but that's only because all of our equals exactly are set to zero. So it's saying when the counter is at zero, everything is visible, including the red and green, but you can't see them because they're underneath this blue layer still. So we're having the same problem, except for all the other counts, everything's invisible and all you can see are the eyes mesh underneath. This is what our eyes look like without any, me without any mesh, without any of these other three on top. So what you need to do is change these values down here. You want to start at zero because it's a uh, sequence and in programming languages, uh, type counters always start at zero. So you'll start at zero. And then for this next one down here, you want to select one, change this number to two. And then because it's a sequence and we want it to finish and start again, we'll change the maximum count to three. So that now we go zero, one, two, and that is essentially a three count uh, sequence. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And now when I click this, it should just take me through the red, green, and blue cycles that I've created. As you can see, as we look at it, you see it pulse through, and the checkbox on each one, as the layers become visible and invisible, as the function just sort of runs its course. And this is me tapping on the screen. So the next thing, now that we've got this sorted, is to add some instructions on the screen, which I'm gonna do by coming up to our device in the scene. This is the main nest of everything that we've got. And this is where we're going to select under custom instruction and patch. We're going to create instructions on opening. That will create these new patches, which will just appear in the middle of your scene and you have to drag them out and tidy things up. I'll create these three new patches. Runtime is basically for as long as the scene is refreshed. So when someone opens up the app, uh, sorry, opens up the filter on their phone, that's when this runtime count starts. <laughs> We also have a less than, which is pretty much, uh, which is in the same logic section as, as equals exactly, except this is looking for uh, a, a count that, that is for as long as the number is lower than this, this thing will happen. So in this case, we want instructions to play on screen for the first five seconds that a user is looking at the filter and then to fade away because you don't really need them to be there for the whole time. So we have this, we have the runtime and the less than, and then the instruction is just the actual patch similar to these, which will enable us to show the text on screen. Right now we have this token, but there's nothing in the box. So we're gonna to need to come up here to project, edit properties and capabilities. And then under the instructions and custom instructions section, you wanna hit the plus button. And you can see there's a large list of instructions that you can choose, but we're gonna be using tap to change because it's quite simple and is probably the most common interaction that you have on uh, Instagram filters. So you wanna take that token, hit done, and then copy and paste it into your uh, patch down here, your instructions patch. So now 
this works just fine, the colors, but when I refresh the scene, you'll now see I also have this tap to change instructions, which appear along the bottom. Now, when you test this on your device and when you actually publish your effects, the tap to change of, uh, instructions will appear more, or more towards the center of the screen around here than down here. But during testing, it just seems more convenient for them to show up at the bottom, so I'm not complaining, but just so that you're aware. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the entire effect. Uh, face meshes with a tap to change interaction. We've got some instructions in there and I've even shown you how to do some eyes, a simple version of eyes that doesn't require GIMP or Photoshop or cutting them out or anything because it's basically just a flat, clean layer underneath. Like, I can't really make them invisible right now, but <laughs> you get what I'm going for. Anyway, that was pretty much the whole video. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you liked. Leave a comment if you uh, have any questions you want me to answer or uh, any you know feedback on the videos I'm making so far. Like I say, it's pretty fun. I just hit 22 subscribers, which is dope. Uh, and I'm kind of excited to see if we can hit 25, maybe by the end of the week. Uh, yeah, I always ramble at the end and that makes these videos a little bit longer than they need to be. But like I say, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.